Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So, I have been covering board books with gel prints. So, just got three different sizes here. Quick flip through of the first one. Oh, I love them. Having wee snippets of complex designs in here, it's just makes it just feel very special now this board book here that i'm going to do with you actually has flaps so i thought okay we'll play with that it's quite um it's quite it's quite torn but that's irrelevant we're only using it as a base so every page has a flap now the flap itself is skinnier than the page Okay. I have been using a glue stick and sandpaper to do this. Um, with the sandpaper, obviously, well ventilated area, face mask, whatever your instructions tell you to do on it is what you do. So, I'll show you these ones quickly as well. I just made these covers plain. I don't know why, because when I look at that one, I'm like, oh, I love it. Stencils from PM Artist Studio. In fact, I think most of them in here are probably from them. I love this. And that's my favourite stencil from them. That and the sunflowers, Melty Morocco and the sunflowers. And this one is a big one. Now this is a single sheet. I'm not sure it was... Do you know, it's fine actually. It's totally fine. I have slightly ripped it there. I got a wee bit excited with the sandpaper. Now, what you'll notice on this one is there's masking tape. Because at first I was using masking tape. But in here, I've actually managed to securely adhere them in the join in the middle. So I'm very pleased um, that I thought it would be quite bumpfold, you know, baggy ear bubbles. So anyway, did a bit more of a collaging on this one. So you see there, and then I thought, let's put on a full page <laughs> of bright pink. I haven't actually put masking tape at all on here. I've just left that blank in the middle. But masking tape, like I said. But like I say, we're not using masking tape. So, I have my board book. I have my papers. I've got lots of them. And we're just going to, I'm going to empty them out. What I thought as well was, especially this one here. So when Drew Steinbrecher does this, he ha I usually has quite graphic, sh strong shapes in black on it as well. So, um, I was thinking it could be it could be useful to have something like that. But I also like this idea of the flip flap, the flip flaps, the flaps. And then I watched a video by Drew, and he was saying to cut this spine here, this square, because then it will help it widen without becoming an alligator so we'll test that theory after okay i have lots of paper i am using a mixture of brown paper overlay sketchbook paper which is 50 gsm and printer paper which is 80 gsm there may be the very odd rice paper. If I come across other papers, I will say, this is a different type of paper. Oh, book pages, but thin book pages. So I think for the cover, things that are double-sided, I'm not using because the glue stick, it would need matte medium or something. And I started using the matte medium to do it, but I just like the convenience 
of the glue stick. Now these will get paint on the other side of the post, don't they? Okay, we can get started. I would say this does use up quite a bit of glue sticks though, so um, you may prefer to use like a matte medium or another type of glue. The board books are pretty sturdy. They can take they can take a fair bit of manhandling before they they say enough is enough. So that's slightly needs to come up slightly. There. So we'll have a wee bit of white at the bottom of that maybe, but that's okay. We'll use a bone folder. Hot pink. And I might even put it. I want it on more. I don't mind getting glue stick in places that and actually put something on top of it because at the end of the day it'll dry in. Now I'm thinking of tearing this. I think because that layer of paint is thin and even it's been fine with the glue stick. I think sometimes the paint is, when it's thick, uneven, textured, grainy. I like the torn edge look. Don't want these to be even. Might even put a slant on it actually. There. I'm tempted by some of let's just use this thing.
I think we'll use this and then we'll just have a little bit of this. So the way that I see it is my papers are very thin, so they come off very easily with the sandpaper. what order you do it in as well can wait till the end and do it all at once which is probably easier you know to go out into a well ventilated area and need any protective equipment that you need to for it And in any way, areas that are still loose. Okay. So I'm actually just going to treat all this like one big page, but obviously to be aware of the joints. Yeah, I just want to start it with this. So on these spines, these joints. I do glue them very well. And also here we're actually, we're going on to a more flexible paper type too. I was using a ruler to do this earlier on. All you do is you just press into it at both sides. You need to make sure that it, it's basically not baggy for when it opens and closes. a wee bit there that happens because we're using thin papers there we go okay so for the rest of it i'm just going to apply the pages and leave them overhanging now i've also got quite a bit of sellotip tape and tearage to deal with so i'll decide what to do as we come to those pages oh this is going to be a four page Okay, I think I think we'll deal with three, and then we'll deal with three. Do you know that was a, a, a like a fir tree leaf, some string and thread.
I kind of liked joining that up there. I definitely stick to lighter weight papers because see even like the overlapping if they were thicker papers the join would be it would cause a lot of difficulties with because the book's so rigid that's a pro in a lot of ways and then in other ways it's obviously this paper's going to be an issue here at this join I don't think that goes that way this this one goes that way see how that's holding up Missed a wee bit here, so I'll need to add a wee bit here. So we've got the first flap done. So I would say is to be mindful that, you know, we will ink around the edges, which, you know, helps tidy up some more, um, gives it a finished look and really hides kind of flaws. Let's see there, that's not a perfectly rounded corner, but with the ink on it, it just makes it look more rounded. So there it is there. And then fold it over and that's it so what we'll do now is we'll go on and we'll do this side so we have we don't have many of these at all actually one two four four flaps so it's pretty pretty small which is the way I like my um, journals and stuff to be anyway, because, let's be honest, um, a lot of the excitement of the journal is the making of it. Well, it, it at least it is for me. <laughs> anyway, I'll get on, get these done, and I'll come back to you once I've got a bit more done with the edges to take off. Okay, so I've covered it all now. So I'll just give you a quick flip through, and then... We'll start taking off the rough edges, so. And then this way. And then that's us there. So, I thought we'd take off the big bits with the craft knife. Okay. 
to now we just need to go around and tidy up all the edges That's the back. That'll explain why that one was sticking up. Now I've managed to make this one tear again, but it's all part of its charm. So this flap had already been torn. I could have sellotaped it or whatever before I put it back together, but I didn't. That's all right. Gonna get the corner around it. That's the thinner flap, and it's actually quite hard to tidy up the edges. So the flap that we put this on top of was already damaged so probably could have replaced that or just removed it. I will say it's more difficult doing it with the flaps however I think it'll be it'll be more of a joy to use it because you've got bit if you want to use a bigger area you've got a bigger area if you want to build in pockets tucks extend pages further then you've got a base to work with for that and also the fact is that the book has been built to accommodate the flaps in the first place so the spine will allow for a bit more I don't think my sandpaper's very good. Oh, still got the side to do. There we go. Now, what do you see? Difference of ink and mix. Okay. See how instantly it just looks tidier, and the little raggedy bits actually help. the ink to kind of stay on. There we have it. Get ink everywhere. This plaster start 
started the video white um just showing you them all sitting together oh i love how these look and feel anyway i'll give you a quick flip through with the ink there we go So there we have it, some artists' books. Um, don't be afraid to go over the joys with the paper. Stick to lightweight paper. Um, use glue stick, you know, depending on what mood you're in. Matte medium will obviously give a more 100% finish. However, I found my glue stick to be very effective um, Q-Connect. So, and a bit of inking. Hides a lot of flaws. So there we go. Some big and bold artist's books made from jelly prints and children's board books and a glue stick. So I hope to see you soon and thanks very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Take care. Bye.